Just how are you supposed to stand up and be heard if you don't have a PowerPoint? We've all seen a lot of PowerPoint presentations, and it might lead you to one conclusion. Is PowerPoint evil? The first thing to be clear about is that while many people seem to hate PowerPoint, PowerPoint in itself is not evil. Shocking, I know. There are, however, many evil things you can do with PowerPoint. And I'm not just talking about when somebody gives a presentation by turning their back to the audience and reading from it, although that's bad. No, we're going to focus on what happens on the slides themselves. One of the things that novice PowerPoint people tend to do is, other than using very ugly graphics and very busy graphics, is that when they want to introduce an element to the screen, they tend to try to make it do something funny, with the idea that if it comes on the screen in an interesting way, then it's going to capture someone's attention. Instead, it just looks kind of stupid and amateurish. It's better to do simple transitions, and this isn't just from element to element, but it's also from slide to slide. I'm not going to do any more of those. Another thing that people tend to do that's a real PowerPoint sin is not think about color contrast. Which one of these, well apart from that horrible transition, is easier to read? The bottom one has good contrast, the top one? Not so much. If you're right on top of it, you can see it, but if the lighting in the room isn't good, or if you're standing a little ways back, it's going to be painful. Visual overload. Having way too many details. Having way too many levels of details. Icons on top of texts, on top of lines, on top of busy background graphics. Not good. Looking for cool over clarity. This font looks marvelous. Never mind you can't read it. Never mind, there's way too many elements in the background to make anything clear. Coolness, looking good, can be important, but it's not as important as being understandable. And this is a lesson that not only PowerPoint people should learn, I think marketing people in general should learn. One of the worst criminals when it comes to bad design trying to be cool over clear is in heavy metal band logos. I don't know why, but a lot of extreme metal bands tend to have these logos that I'm sure that says something, and I'm sure these all say something. But at least half of these you have to sit and stare at to figure out what the name of the band is. Not good. Things need to be clear and recognizable, and clarity is a lot more important than how bitchin' something looks. The level of text that people put on slides can be another real PowerPoint sin. You don't need much. You shouldn't have much. You shouldn't have long quotes. If you're giving your presentation in person, someone is going to be reading your long quote and not paying a single bit of attention to you. But even if you're doing an online presentation, it has the same level of effect. You ever seen one of those home improvement shows or one of those house selling shows where someone can't look past the clutter to see the house? It's the same kind of thing here. People get distracted by shiny objects, and they're just going to blank out if they see way too much. And this goes not just for words, but also data. You don't want tons and tons of data on your screen. Break this out into a whole bunch of different slides, and it's going to work better for you. Organization is almost always better than randomness. Breaking down organization, having a scheme, putting stuff to grids, these are all things we talked about when we talked about graphic design, and they're still important when it comes to PowerPoint presentations. In fact, you probably want to go back and re-watch Document Design 2, because all of the principles there still hold true. So, what should you do? Some basic hints on putting together your PowerPoint slide deck. Think about your slides last. Craft your talk, figure out what you need to do to get that talk across, and then design your slides. The slides, after all, are supposed to be an accoutrement, something that helps you get your message across. They're not the focus. Create a consistent look and feel. 
you notice whenever I have text boxes in these videos, I use this font, I use this color text box, I use this angle of text box. It creates continuity and makes stuff look like it belongs together. Think about topic transitions. When you go from slide to slide to slide, do it in a way that makes sense in terms of the argument, in terms of what you're presenting. With text, less is more. Hell, with graphics, less is more. You can always put a number of slides in rather than trying to cram everything into one. Use photos and images that enhance meaning. They shouldn't be there just to look cool. They should always work in terms of what you're trying to accomplish with the presentation. Now, there are a whole bunch of resources online that can help you put together good slides and do good presentations. I recommend the TED Talk people. Ted does a lot of work on how to do really good presentations, put together really good slide decks. And I'm going to put a link to the 10 tips on how to make slides that communicate your idea. But generally watching a few Ted Talks and copying them, you could do much worse. PowerPoint is an amazingly powerful program. Using it well, though, requires a little bit of creativity, but a lot of common sense can help you there, too. I use PowerPoint for all of the graphics in my online presentations and these filmy youtube -y things because, well, it's there and it can do a lot. So embrace it, but learn a little bit about it. And please don't do one of those PowerPoints and make everybody in your audience go... That's not good. I have faith. See you next video.